In this video, I'm going to provide you further insight as to why Isaiah Thomas was left off the 1992 USA men's basketball dream team at the Olympics. Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Jacob Wallace here with Amateur Hour Sports where we give you raw and unfiltered sporting content Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So if it is your first time here with me and you maybe like insight, opinion on the sporting world, or maybe some informative videos about the history of sport, make sure you subscribe to Amateur Hour Sports to keep getting more content just like this. Again, talking about Isaiah Thomas, you know, we got a lot of information about it in the last dance. I'm just going to provide my insight and opinion on how I believe everything unfolded with that 92 dream team. Those bad boy pistons were on top of the nba they had won back-to-back -back nba championships in the years leading up to this but it was done in an ugly way and we all know that they won those back-to-back -back championships in 89 and 90 off the back of being complete assholes to the other team they thrived off being hated and completely disgusted by every other team in the nba they had big dirty players guys like bill lambeer on their team who is an absolute scum of the fucking earth like there's physical play and there's dirty play like there's the knicks of the early 90s who they were bigger than other teams so they weren't as fast so what they had as an edge against other teams is that they had the physicality they didn't have the speed so they had to find a way to get above get a tick above the other team except this is done in a different way than just being dirty like the pistons you, know, you can be physical with your play and obviously in any era any team of any sport you can find one play that is super dirty and it's one that you frown upon but it's not consistent that's the key word with the pistons the bad boy pistons it was consistently dirty play every game it seemed like all the time it happened so frequently that's how we associate them with the knicks there's a few here and there but it's mostly just physical basketball and the pistons are also very open about how scummy and how dirty they were they are consistently open about that aspect in the conference finals against jordan every time they faced him they literally went out to hurt him if he got in the lane you fucking knocked his ass on the ground that's what always happened when michael jordan had the fucking basketball the pistons were known to be dirty and they made it known in that documentary and they made it known on the court it wasn't like they were trying to hide it like bill lambeer could literally go up double elbow at fucking Michael Jordan knock his ass on the ground and Jordan was a smaller guy so it was difficult for him to cope until he put on muscle in that 1991 season that's when he started to thrive and they swept the Pistons Bill Lambeer by the way says that anything he did then was just oh it was mind games you know wasn't trying to be dirty it was mind games the only thing that bill lambeer did with your mind is smash it into the fucking hardwood and would feel absolutely no regret or remorse over that he would want to fucking hurt you but again they swept the pistons in 91 it is that infamous series where the pistons walk off with seven seconds left and do not shake the bull's hands now let's get to isaiah thomas one of the biggest pieces of trash in nba history you know what no sports history isaiah was a small dude you know he wasn't a big dude he was 6'1 180 pounds i feel like i could go toe to toe with isaiah you know i'm six feet 215 I could probably give Isaiah a run for his money here. This fucking bitch would get involved with dudes like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, who were a lot bigger than he was, but he would go after these guys, get involved dirty, like throw punches at these guys. There's any videos of him throwing punches at Larry Bird. I could make a hoop mix longer than 10 minutes of Isaiah Thomas being an absolute menace and piece of shit on the basketball court. And there's a difference. It wasn't physicality. He literally, it was not physical. It was cheap shots. It was dirty play. And these guys would lay his ass on the fucking ground. But then Isaiah Thomas got his big boys beside him, the bad boy Pistons. He would get guys like Bill Lambeer to come fight his battles for it and puss out before anything could happen. He'd just back away from it. You know, he'd throw a dirty punch at Larry Bird and then the big guys would come in and defend him it's like isaiah thomas never held himself accountable for his actions he never took or accepted any sort of blame for anything that happened you know whole world is against isaiah thomas for some reason, Isaiah has this image in his head that he's some messiah. It's like the school bully that gets to high school and wonders why he has no friends. This Pistons team had absolutely no regard for the safety of other players. And that's something I can't stand. There's, there's, 
there's dirty which you know it gets to a border and when you cross that border it's no regard for the safety of the other team you notice some cheap shots and whatnot but this is literally trying to hurt injure and possibly end the career of your opposition players even the most physical players in the world in any sport do not put the health of others at risk as a result of playing the game. You should not fear for your safety when you go on a basketball court. They would wait for you to get in your most vulnerable position, so going up for a layup perhaps, and then knock your ass on the ground, hit you with cheap shots, elbows, fists, whatever it may be. No worry for the repercussions. And consistently, players have said that Isaiah Thomas was the ringleader behind this. There is literal footage on record of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen saying that Isaiah Thomas was the general, the ringleader behind this bad boy Pistons operation, mouthing off in their ears what to do to these players, getting them to fight his battles for him, telling his teammates, Night Michael Jordan goes up, knock his ass on the ground. Obviously, you still need an element of skill to go win an NBA championship, but it's no secret that at times the Pistons were outmatched from a skill standpoint, especially against the Chicago Bulls. So this was their way of combating that through dirty play. And it looks very bad. It looks horrible on your league when a team like this comes out on top. I mean, you can look at the NHL in the early 70s, how disgusting that league was. You had the Philadelphia Flyers, the Broad Street Bullies winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in the mid-70s, just getting historical amounts of penalty minutes, just beating up other players, injuring them, going after them, no remorse for their safety, just completely battering the other team. And they won two Stanley Cups as a result. They enjoyed being the most hated team in the league and they fed off of that. But again, back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in the 70s. And that was awful for the NHL. This is right before sports took a huge market spike. And baseball was always on top, but the NHL, NBA, NFL were lagging behind, and I attribute that this, the Broad Street Bullies era, really hindered the NHL's ability to increase their market value because the NBA all of a sudden shot up, and the NFL as well. Those two are dominant. Baseball is starting to regress now, but it was always on top at the time. The NHL has always been relatively low, and it didn't spike with the other teams at that time. And I think it's because the NHL didn't do a good enough job of cleaning up the reputation of the league. David Stern came into the NBA and very much cleaned it up, allowing the NBA to grow from a market standpoint. That's why the best NFL, NBA, MLB players can make 30 plus, 35 million plus million dollars a year. The best NHL players make 12, 13 million dollars a year. There are scrubs in the NBA making more than the best NHL players. And, you know, if your league doesn't do anything to change the reputation of the league, this is the fate. If it wasn't for Jordan, the Pistons could have done the same to the NBA in the late 80s, early 90s. Thankfully, Jordan beat them in 91 and ruined that dynasty and started his own dynasty of great basketball. Very marketable, very reputable basketball. And to top all all of that off all of the pain like literal physical pain they caused to other teams the dynasty ends in 91 with no handshake for the chicago bulls the bulls kicked their ass in that conference finals but no handshake two years prior the pistons literally kicked their ass but in a basketball sense a close series beat them two years in a row the bulls shake their hands both years michael jordan you know grits his teeth goes in, looks Isaiah Thomas in the eye and shakes his hand. A, a painful moment for a sports player. Isaiah Thomas, 30 years onwards with the platform to make amends, at least a little bit, you know, show some remorse, maybe even give an apology or merely say it was wrong to do what we did. He had the platform to millions of people to broadcast that apology or whatever. And what did he do? What did Isaiah do? The biggest scum on the earth continued the trend and he doubled fucking down. He talks about how in 1988, the Boston Celtics, who lost the Pistons in a series, walked off the court before the game was done. There were a few seconds left, and they just walked off the court without shaking any of the Detroit Pistons' hands. So Isaiah said, based off of that, you don't have to shake hands if you don't want to. You know, it's a respectful thing to do, but if you don't want to shake hands, like the Boston Celtics showed in 1988, you don't have to shake hands. But then... There's footage of Isaiah Thomas at that moment chasing down a Celtics player, forcing him to shake his hand. Isaiah Thomas ran over to a player, forcing him to shake his hand. So Isaiah Thomas, I thought it was okay not to shake hands. Oh, wait, 
Pistons won that series. It's okay to shake hands when you win. Yeah, you gotta shake hands when you win. But when you lose, ah, no, you don't have to if you don't want to. But when the Celtics didn't want to, oh, now it's a problem. Isaiah Thomas is running over trying to make them shake his hand. So Isaiah Thomas, undoubtedly a phenomenal player. He's a great player. We know that. And he was worthy of the Dream Team in 92. He definitely fit the criteria. Problem is, everybody on that Dream Team fucking hated Isaiah Thomas for good reason. Especially Jordan, Magic, and Bird, the three main key and best players on that dream team and isaiah thomas is in the documentary oh i don't know why i didn't get picked i don't know why they didn't have me on the team why does everybody hate me if there are players who consistently don't like you and there are a consistent amount of players who do not like you it's time to maybe reflect look in the mirror and say well if this keeps happening to me Maybe I am the problem. It's not just some fluke that people just don't like you consistently. You're the centerpiece. The same variable that is in every situation is you. You are the cause of the problem. It's not everybody out to get you. You create these hideous relationships with people and you have to pay the price of it. But Isaiah Thomas, even 30 years later, cannot hold himself accountable for his decisions. And if I'm on the dream team and I know Isaiah Thomas is the scum of the earth, fucking right i'm telling them i'm not playing if isaiah thomas is on the fucking team i don't want to associate with that guy in any way isaiah thomas was held accountable and responsible for his actions in getting left off of the 1992 dream team except isaiah thomas could never hold himself accountable for his decisions and that is the biggest problem he would never accept his own shortcomings and always held himself on his high ass fucking horse doing as he pleases ignoring the repercussions and that is why everybody hated him that is why he wasn't selected and thus solves the not so much a mystery of why isaiah thomas was left off of the 1992 dream team the last dance documentary made that ever so clear and i hope i could make it even more clear with this video Thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video if you like and subscribe to Amateur Hour Sports for more content just like this as well. Hit that notification bell. We post four times a week here with Amateur Hour Sports. Be sure to stay up to date with every episode. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. And if you disagree, that's okay. See you again next time.